Hey guys, no, 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 dude. And today I wanted to uh, kind of talk about Sword Art Online. Um, I've always known about Sword Art Online, but I was never really interested in it. Uh, you know, I heard stories how it was kind of a mediocre anime and how it was apparently the worst show ever made. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I never really cared about watching it myself. It was only years after that uh, one of my friends actually introduced me to it and forced me at literal gunpoint to uh, watch the first episode and turns out that I actually enjoyed it, you know? Um, I actually enjoyed it and I decided to watch it on my own and honestly, the only thing I really have to say about Sword Art Online is that there's a lot of potential and a lot of interesting topics and ideas that they could have explored in the show but instead, I think Sword Art Online just kind of flops and only touches on the surface of this potential. And I kind of want to talk about some of these things and what I think about Sword Online as a whole, so let's get into it. So, the way the anime starts is that in 2022, we have this thing called a Nerve Gear, which is essentially the metaverse, but not shitty. You know, it, it's essentially like a glorified VR headset that allows you to be transported into the video game world and all of your like five senses. So you are essentially transported into a video game world and it's like real life, right? You can feel, touch and do all that cool stuff. And uh, during this time, there was like this grand opening for this uh, huge game called Sword Art Online or SAO. Um, and the main character, Kazuto uh, Kirigaya, or also known as Kirito, was one of the 10,000 players who got access to this game. You know, he logs onto it, and um, after a while, he meets this guy called Klein, you know, so he kind of teaches him the ropes, you know. Um, they kind of do the usual gamer stuff, like blaming their teammates and also saying the n-word in the chat. Uh, but after playing for a bit, they find something weird, right? They find out that the logout button just isn't there. In other words, they're stuck inside of the video game. So after a while, um, all of the 10,000 players are transported into the main hub of the starter area and the game master, you know, the creator of this game or the admin, uh, Akihiko Kayaba, essentially tells them that the only way to leave this game is to essentially beat all 100 floors, but there's a catch, right? If your HP reaches zero in this game, um, you essentially die in real life because the Nerve Gear has this weird microwave thing that essentially fries your brain and kills you if you die. So right off the bat, we have an extremely fantastic premise and setting. Not only that, but I think that Kirito himself is also an incredibly relatable character. I'm not talking about his parents not being his parents really and his stepsister wanting to fuck him because I don't have a stepsister who wants to fuck me, sadly. Um, I'm mostly talking about the whole aspect of him being a loner and playing video games to sort of cope with his life, if that makes sense, because being a bit personal here, you know, if you forgive me for being personal with you, um, I'm someone who has had an incredibly shitty life, you know. Both of my parents are incredibly abusive. My mother broke my finger in a beating when I was younger. Um, I was bullied for most of my school year. Um, I never really had any meaningful friendships and all of the friendships I've had were either toxic or I had to cut them out of my life or some people just aren't present in my life anymore because they had to move out to a different city or they're like studying in a university so I can't hang out with them. So, you know, I've been alone for most of my life and I've always suffered with depression, self-doubt, anxiety and all that. So as a result, I've always been sort of a loner and because of this, I played a lot of video games to sort of cope and replace my social interactions. So I think the idea of Kirito was incredibly fantastic, you know. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about Kirito in uh, the Alfenheim arc, because I actually kind of explore that side of him. Oh, and uh, also incest. So uh, why do I think that Sword Art Online is just a huge missed potential? Because the recipe for success certainly is there, I just think that the chef just doesn't know how to cook, and uh, god, that, that fucking analogy is so bad, uh, but yeah, I kind of want to talk about, uh, for reals though, why I think that Sword Art Online has so many bad ideas and so many bad executions. Like for example, one of the biggest things that just kind of bothers me about Sword Art Online is the fact that they don't really explore, talk about, or just 
develop a lot of the themes and ideas that I would have loved to personally see here. Like, for example, what would you do if you were trapped inside of this game world, you know? And what would you do if you were trapped inside of this video game world after two or three years of no progress and no end in sight? Like, what would you do? Like, for example, some players would essentially kill themselves after after just being in this game world where they can literally die at any time if they want to get out of it, you know? I think some players would just be just so tired, so fed up with all of this that they would commit suicide, you know? Again, the anime does show a scene where players are killing themselves, but they don't really go into depth into this topic, you know? Uh, and I personally think that there would be some sort of epidemic where there are players mass killing themselves. Um, not only that, but I think that there's a lot of players who just go fucking mad, you know? They would just be so stressed, so depressed, so... Just so everything, that they would essentially just go fucking mad, they would be hostile to other players, or they would just stop functioning altogether because they're just so done with all of this, you know? And a lot of players would just be used to it, you know? A lot of players would genuinely adapt to these shitty conditions, you know? They would just adapt to it and life would just move on. You know, you could also see that side of the player base. Or, more interest, or more interestingly, like, players like me. You know, because if I was in the world of Search Online or any video game worlds, I think that I would personally really enjoy it in a weird, sick way. Like, what I mean by this, uh, for example, I've already established how my own life is fucking shit, and I don't really have any, like, a reason to go on, if that makes sense. I'm not going to commit Fortnite or anything, but my life is just kind of empty and devoid of meaning, so I don't really have, I don't really have anything to look forward to in my life, if I'm being honest. Uh, I work a job, you know, uh, that doesn't really give me any meaning, you know, I just work a 9 to 5, where... I'm just kind of a zombie, you know, I'm just kind of an NPC, you know, another cog in the world that's going to be replaced when I'm old, mauled, and bald. Um, I have no family, no friends, uh, no girlfriend, blah blah blah, so I think that if I was trapped into a uh, video game world, I think I would enjoy it in, in a weird way because I just have nothing going for me in the real world, you know? I think personally that would be a very interesting topic to explore, you know, exploring the psychology of players like me who have nothing going for them in the real world, so they just don't care about clearing the game and they just want to have fun in this dangerous game fantasy world, if that makes sense, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird, I, I wish they could have really explored that side of the players, and I also would see that, or sorry, I can also see a group of players team killing the other gamers who are trying to clear out the dungeons and save everyone. I, I also think that that would have been a really cool and interesting team to explore further, but as I said, they don't really do that in Sword Online. They just kinda show or mention these things briefly, and then just, they just go back to fan service or just other bullshit, you know? But uh, yeah. Um, they also did something which I enjoyed, which was show how some players' bodies were deteriorating over time because they were like in the game for too long. So I don't know, I, I think that was really cool, I wish they would have done more of that and I kind of wish they would have explored uh, a lot of these topics and themes I just talked about a bit further. So I, I think that the anime would have definitely been way cooler if they did that, but yeah, I, I guess we can't have everything we want in life. Another thing that just really bothers me about uh, this anime is the fact that there's a lot of fluff, if I'm being honest. I, I don't think they do a good job making the anime interesting, like for example, um, I think the characters are underdeveloped and not very interesting. Like for example, Klein. Um, what the fuck, Klein? Like, why? Why is Klein? How is Klein? What is Klein? You know, Klein is literally just a, doing nothing in the story. Like, if we remove him, die. Okay. Anyway, anyway, I'm not gonna get pissed off. But um, I think the characters are just so underdeveloped. Klein barely appears in the story, and when he appears, uh, he's like. Oh, hey Kirito, why aren't you my friend? Why aren't you sucking my c cock? Uh, why did you abandon me all those years ago? Blah blah blah. You know, it's, they, they just do nothing with him, like literally. 
uh, then we have some random fucking blacksmith girl and then some underaged 14 year old girl who is the victim of tentacle porn I, 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 don't, I don't get it it's, it's fucking weird how the anime just does so many dumb shits alright uh, again I don't, I don't get it I think the characters are definitely underdeveloped uh, which just kind of bothered me not only that but the anime also does a lot of time skips which could have been spent like I don't know talking about the lore of the universe that they're playing in like in, can you imagine that you know can you imagine that bullshit so they don't do that um, you know uh, they could have spent time talking about uh, about the mechanics of the game and how the combat works they could have literally done anything with that time skip but instead they don't do that so I guess spending time doing random shit uh, having fan service or just taking care of a literal AI child who calls you mommy and daddy is way better than developing or having any sort of semblance of a cool story so I don't know I, I think that whole part just kind of bothered me as well as the whole oh looks like I'm the bad guy actually haha <laughs> lol it just came out of nowhere and I don't know if it's because I just didn't care I wasn't paying attention or my HD brain was playing monkey balls or, or something but I just just the reveal that Kayaba or whatever this fucking Spastic's name is just comes out of nowhere and is like, oh yeah, I'm actually the bad guy, uh, and I trapped you here because lol get fucked. So I don't know. Uh, I think the whole motivation of the villain just, um, you know, putting you into this game world just for the funsies was just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I'm sure there was a reason I didn't pay attention because at that point I just didn't care about the story or whatever. But I don't know. Just, they could have literally done anything with this character, but instead he just kind of. It just kind of puts people into the skin worlds, killed like 4,000 players, just, you know, because, I don't know. I truly rubbed me the wrong way. But, in any case, I think that season 1 was enjoyable. I did enjoy it, I did enjoy the shenanigans and the fan service, despite what I said. I just think that it made me way too angry, because I think they could have literally done anything else with the characters, story, premise, uh, lore, like you name it, so, I don't know. I think... The end credit arc had amazing, amazing potential, but delivered on almost none of it. Um, and then we have the Offenheim arc, which just makes me want to uh, Fortnite myself, you know? Like, god damn it. I honestly think that when you die, instead of going to hell, you just go to watch the Offenheim arc on 24-7, you know? You just repeat that shit over and over and over until the end of time as punishment for your fucking sins, I don't know. Because I think that the fans were like, I bet you can't make a worse anime than this. And then the creator of Search Online was like, alright, bet. And then he made the Alfenheim. The reasons why I don't like Alfenheim is because of the whole character assassination we just witnessed with Asuna. I think Asuna was one of the only decent characters in uh, Sword Online. Like, I, I actually enjoyed her. She was the only character I liked in uh, Sword Online, if I'm being honest. Um, but she just gets reduced into a damsel in distress and gets sexually, sorry, gets fortnighted, you know, she gets the uh, game award performed on her, so I, I, I didn't like that. I think the villain is even worse uh, than um, fucking Kaiba. It's just, god, at, at least Kaiba created something interesting. This one is just kind of a parasite leashing off his work, and I don't know. I, I also think the premise of Offenheim it's like sort of online but worse because you take all the risk and all the dangers of the first in quite arc because if you die in uh, this one you don't you know you don't die in real life you just kind of go back to a fucking spawn point or whatever I don't remember I kind of skipped um, all of this and uh, they don't really fix the problem with the uh, the characters um, that I had with the first one they're still basic planned and just uninteresting you know so I don't know, I, I didn't really care about um, uh, this this arc, you know, I was hoping that they would fix it, uh, but yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't fix in crowd arc, I was hoping for a better anime than that, but no. The uh, only good things I enjoyed about the um, Offenheim arc was the real life scenes, you know, the ones where you learn a bit more about Kirito, why he is the way he is, you know, why he is a loner, why he plays a lot of video games and all of that, and um, also the incest. No, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but um, for real though, uh, that was like the only good thing with, um, you know, 
the Offen M arc, because I think the whole incest thing, the whole boring world of the fairies, uh, and just the shitty villain, I don't know, it's just, just kind of like left a bad taste in my mouth, which made me very disappointed, like me to my parents, uh, because I actually enjoyed the Incred arc despite everything I said, you know, I think it had a lot of potential, but then they just drop kick me in the balls and create Offenheim, which was just so awful I had to skip it, so. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna watch any more Sword Art Online content uh, because, again, this left a bad taste in my mouth. But you know, we'll see. I uh, yeah, I, I guess that's the end of the video. Now that I think about it, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed it, leave a like uh, to help me out. Subscribe and hit that bell notification because I'm planning on making even more videos. So um, yeah, um, thank you for watching, and I would also like to know what you think. Um, about search online, your thoughts, if you agree, if you disagree with me, um, obviously this video is gonna have like zero dislikes, because I'm a fucking perfect YouTuber, I mean, if you go to my channel, there's like zero dislikes, I mean, beautiful, uh, but for those though, um, just share your opinions, I would like to have a discussion with you in the comments, I think it will be very interesting, and um, I don't know, just give me feedback on what you thought of this video, and what you would like to see next, so yeah, goodbye, take care, kisses.